Don't be ambiguous. Don't be too wordy. Be brief. Be orderly. And avoid obscurity are the four maxims of manner. Uh, and I think those are frequently violated. Uh, in fact, there are certain schools of philosophy, not ones that I'm sympathetic with, where they're more or less uh, systematically uh, violated. I don't know if I've told you this story, but I once had a conversation with a famous French philosopher who's a friend of mine, and I said to him, why the hell do you write so badly? Pourquoi tu écris si mal? I, and he said, look, if I wrote as clearly as you do, uh, people in Paris wouldn't take me seriously. You know, they'd think it's childlike, it's naive. Uh, this was Michel Foucault. Uh, and he, uh, was a, he I was a very smart guy and wrote a lot of very good stuff. But it, he, in general, he just wrote badly. When you heard him give a lecture in Berkeley, it was perfectly clear. He's just as clear as I am. So why don't you write clearly? And he said, well, in France, you, you have, I, I, it would not be... It would be regarded as somewhat childish and naive if you wrote clearly. And I said, come on, now you're, tu te moques un peu de moi, you're making fun of me. Tell me exactly why you write so badly, because in conversation you're just as clear as I am. And he said, en France, il faut avoir au moins 10% incompréhensible. Uh, and that uh, translates as, in France, you've got to have 10% incomprehensible. Otherwise, people won't think it's deep. They won't think you're a profound thinker. And I gave a series of lectures in Paris at the Collège de France uh, with another uh, very famous uh, French philosopher as my host, Pierre Bourdieu. And I told this story to Pierre, you know, what did he think of that? And he said, it's worse than 10%, more like 20%. And I have to say, if you read Bourdieu, yeah, 20% at least is. I, I once assigned one of, I, I, had, I admired Bourdieu, I thought he was a terrific guy, and the conversation just as clear as you or me. Uh, but I once assigned one of his books uh, for a course I was teaching in Berkeley, The Logic of Practice, and my students couldn't make head or tail out of it. And to truth to tell, I have trouble uh, trying to figure out what he's saying. So you can have a look at that. It's called The Logic of Practice is the English translation. And it's about the background. It's about what I call the background, and I thought they ought to have somebody else's conception of the background. Uh, so Bourdieu and Foucault uh, wrote a kind of Franco-German. Uh, it was uh, very obscure. Now, Foucault got uh, more clear later on in life. And in fact, he told a friend of mine uh, that he preferred life in America because he could write more, uh, more clearly. But his English wasn't very good, so he, I, he didn't. He, said, he told, um, um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Yves Michaud. He, he told Yves, he said, if I spoke better English, I'd move permanently to the United States. But his English was uh, not all that great. But in any case, I, there are cases where the maxim of, of uh, clarity, uh, the, uh, don't be obscure and don't be ambiguous, uh, those are systematically violated. And I think uh, German philosophy has a lot to answer for. See, there was a time when I learned French when the slogan was, ce qui n'est pas clair n'est pas français. If it's not clear, it's not French. Uh, that has been abandoned in French philosophy, and a lot of it is very obscure. Okay, now relation is the one that's most interesting for our present purposes, and Grice says there's only one maxim.